Hey everyone, I just wanted to do a quick video sharing a few things that I said I was going to share. Hope you checked out my last video. It would have been covering part two of this watercolor versus gouache demo. Various water soluble markers in the past for runny ink effects and you can check out my video showing the effects you can get with those markers. And the markers I primarily use are either an Elegant Rider or an Itoya calligraphy pen. And again, you can see that you can make a line with this and this is meant to be a calligraphy pen but you can draw an ink drawing with it and then if you use just water on a brush it gives you this nice runny effect. Now the reason this is interesting is because not only can you make this effect with this but you can actually come back and paint over this once this is dry and once this ink has been activated once it won't reactivate so you can do this as many times as you'd like with more watercolor over the top and your ink lines will stay this way and it won't make your paper muddy. And this is just a great way of adding some personality to an ink drawing, you know, adding some shading or coloring that way and turning it into a tonal drawing. Winsor Newton has come out with something called a watercolor marker and it's supposed to be usable with watercolors. That would be the watercolor tubes or watercolor pans. And the first thing is that these are not as saturated. It doesn't immediately come out of the marker that dark. And maybe that's something that you like. I do like the two tips, a small pointed tip, and I like that there's a, a brush tip on the other side like this. I bought three others. I bought a turquoise, a dioxazine purple, and a black. And the black, as you can see, was completely dry. And these two didn't do so well either, so they're gonna go back to the store. And here's the, the sepia one that I have and it does produce runny watercolor effects. This is part of the marker that I made wet before. This is like the Elegant Rider. It looks like it gets wet once and activates, and after that it won't reactivate. I like better about the Elegant Rider is that the ink, it looks more inky, and for some reason that just looks more tasty. It separates into these like blues and purples, and it is a very dark black line, whether you use the Elegant Rider or the Itoya, but when you use any of these markers, it seems like even for the ones that aren't running dry, it just doesn't seem very saturated. And also, I don't really like as much the kind of water effects it produces. I mean, it does get wet and move a little bit, but it doesn't sort of give really delicious lines. This is Permanence A. That means it's light fast. This Elegant Rider is not light fast. So it will not last forever. You won't be able to do an archival piece with it. So that is the difference. This was just drawing paper. And now I'm gonna try it on BFK Reeves, so just for kicks, it shows up more on this paper. So for the Elegant Writer, so you can see the different kinds of things that you can do with a marker. Use it to create negative shapes or positive shapes. And you see how highly saturated that is. Huh, wow. So this BFK Reeves is soft sized. It means it's internally sized with gelatin, but not externally sized. So you would expect fewer blending effects on this than on Arches. So this is made by Arches, but it's not Arches watercolor paper. It's a printmaking paper. It's still very lovely to paint on with ink or watercolor. And it is obvious that the Elegant Writer does much better. It does actually activate and bleed, whereas the Winsor & Newton watercolor marker, despite being a watercolor marker, is not moving at all on this paper. Maybe if you want to just use it to add details into your watercolor painting, maybe you can use it for that, but I don't know that I do that either. I think I just use a teeny brush. So this is actual watercolor paper, a Winsor & Newton watercolor card. So you would assume that both would do well because this is actually watercolor paper. And again, I'll use uh, the large tip on one side and I'll use the small tip on the other side. The Elegant Writer is also available in different colors, so you can actually use different colors. It's not only available in black. I've had illustration commissions before where I really liked the runny ink effect, and I used the Elegant Writer, and it didn't really matter if it was archival or not because it was for a commission. Oh, wow. This is not moving on watercolor paper either. Why call it a watercolor marker if it doesn't move at all? So strange. I can try a really smooth paper. So I'll draw a few lines with the Elegant Writer. So this is hot press arches. So if it doesn't bleed on this, because it's the smoothest paper, I don't think it's gonna bleed anywhere. You have the option, of course, to use this marker so that it doesn't bleed. And now you can see that I will be able to produce some runny effects. So looks like you can only use this on hot press. And even then it's kind of a lame color release. 
I wouldn't. I mean, let's just try to blow this out completely. That's not that much color. It doesn't really release enough color and it doesn't blend on all sorts of paper. It only blends on hot press or smooth drawing paper. If you want to make something that's not archival but looks really cool, then I would still suggest the Elegant Writer. And I would skip this Windsor & Newton watercolor marker and choose to still use the Elegant Writer instead. I think if you have a runny ink piece, we're still waiting for an Elegant Writer quality marker to come out that's archival. Because this is archival, but it's not as nice.